Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And we're back today to show you a brand new deck with a new set of one of uh, the Magic Stone War Zero, and it's got some pretty crazy stuff in it with the new double ruler rules. So this deck we're calling it the Fey Wilds because we're pretty much just using all the fairies. We're gonna or fairy tale creatures. That's all we're gonna be doing is tribal fairy tales. Done. So before we get into it, guys, I just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link is down below. It only takes a dollar to give us some love and support. We'd greatly appreciate it. Also, you'll catch all of our like deck brick deck text earlier there in Patreon, so you can go check it out and see all the cool stuff we have coming up and what's on the brew. <laughs> Secondly, down below, you'll find our uh, FOW Grimoire. It is our own app that we made for the Force Wheel game that has a deck base and a deck builder for everything, so you can just. If you're bored and you're like, I need to make a deck on the go, you're like, cool, let's do it. Or you just have any, like an idea pop in your head and you're just like, I need to make sure I put this down. You can. Or if you're just like, what does that card do? Go look it up. Uh, with that, that is, it's, it's a super good app, so go check it out. Yes. With that, guys, we're going to delve into the Feywilds with our boy Gruz Balesta and our girl Almerius. So, first up, Almerius. She is one of the white rulers of the new set, and she has the tag team rules, so you have to have a tag team ruler, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she judges for white, white, and one, and you can have only tag team rulers as the doubles. Um, if you if you would set your starting life, you set it to that much plus three thousand instead, which is ridiculous. Yeah, so awesome. Uh, you may pay one less to do judging of rulers you control, and you can tap target J resonator against plus two plus two until the end of turn. And then she judges into a six eight flyer. Enter put target light non chant card or light alternate card with non chant part from the graveyard into the field. Pay a white, J resonators you control get plus two, plus two until an end of turn. So she's there to help you protect your resonators mostly and to give you the free buffer of life because that's what we're doing. And then just like bump your old team when you're just ready to swing alpha. Uh, of course, the next one is Gruz Ballista. It's uh, also the judgment of black, black, and one. Has a tag team of six sages, yada, 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 as we'll do. But what he can do is if you would call your first magic stone in the game, you may search it for a magic stone deck for a card. You may put it in the field instead if you do shuffle your magic stone deck. And whenever a magic stone enters the field from a J ruler you control, it gains tap, produce a, a moon, or any attribute until end of turn. And if you do so, uh, tap, uh, banish a magic stone, go get a magic stone, and put it into play. But you must have to bet banish one of your stones for sure. Mm -hmm. That's the errata of it. Now, of course, when he does judgment, he is a 7-7, and when this card gains plus two, plus two, uh, for each different name, among all magic stones you control. This card gains eternal as long as you control five or more magic stones with different names. Uh, it's pretty easy to do so. And the magic stones you control gain tap, produce a moon or one will of any attribute, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, we're using Gruz Ballesta today mainly to get a free stone that we want yep. and to trigger the different colors of stones. Don't really care about the different like name stones. It's we have five, but it's not like a major part of the deck. Yeah, it's all about just having the, you know, all the five <clears throat> colors and plus, yeah, what you're, what you're saying is get the one that you need yeah. at the very beginning. And the one you need at the very beginning is for this girl right here. The little Red, the Fairy Tale of Air. She has one green for a 3-3 three, three Resonator. This card gets plus one, plus one for each Wind Magic Stone you control. This card gains Swiftness as long as you control a basic Wind Magic Stone. So turn one, you so go get the basic Wind Magic Stone and you don't have to worry about it ever again. Yep. And you're going to have... If you play her turn one, cool. If you play her turn five, it doesn't matter because turn one, you're still going to have any mana as long as you play that stone like you would with Gris Ballesta. So it's just how it is. Exactly. Uh, and then oh, she yeah. also has the other side, which is the alternate part, which is uh, Wind of the Gods, which is one green for a chant, put target fire or darkness resonator on top of its owner's deck. So yeah. it helps you clear the boy. So you're just like, cool, get that dude out of my way. So she kind of has the sideboard tech to her already yeah. attached, which is pretty awesome. The next one is uh, Tinkerbell, the spirit slash slash reign of light. Uh, Tinkerbell is a one drop zero zero resonator, but it gets plus two plus two for each fairy tale you control. So she's obviously a fairy tale. So two, two. And then her chant, of course, is a quick cast. It's a blue Y and X. It's called reign of light and target up to X resonators. Rest those of your opponents. Sorry, rest those. What? Rest those your opponent's controls and recover those you, you control. control. Yeah. Which very weird. That sounds weird to me. Yeah, it's an odd card that was played back in the day, but it didn't see a lot of play because it didn't have a use. This yeah. way, it at least puts it on another card, so you have a chance to use it if you need to. Yeah. 
Uh, next up is White Wolf. It is one white for a 4-6 drain. This card gains plus two, plus two for each light crystal you control, and we do have a way to make crystals. And the next is Never in the Fairy Tale Dragon. It's a one blue, one one. It has flying. Enter, draw a card. So awesome. This card gains plus 14, plus 14, and fairy tales you control gain eternal. As long as there are 10 or more fairy tales in the field under your control and or slash in your graveyard. Rest of recovered J Ruler you control, cards you control, and cards you own in the non field zones gain fairy tale until end of turn. So that can get there really quickly. Yeah. And he's super good just because you can be like, cool, tap all my chants that don't have a thing are yeah. fairy tales. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thanks. Next is Minfia, the storytelling girl. She is a blue and a white for a 4 7 fairy tale spirit human. Um, rest of recovered J Ruler you control. Put two 1 1 counters on each spirit and or fairy tale J Ruler you control. So she's there to just help you get stronger, get quicker, because you're like, cool, tap my dude, tap my ruler, my dudes get bigger at the end of the turn. Yeah, and it's all of two counters on all your dudes, not just one. And yeah, it's just recover A1. So if you have both of them untapped, you can get multiple counters. Yeah, which is uh, pretty ridiculous. The next is a uh, Princess Kaguya slash slash the Flying Bamboo. Uh, she is a white and a one six six. If you produce a will with a Magic Stone you control, you produce that will plus Moon instead. Calling a Magic Stone does not cause your J Ruler to rest, which is crazy ridiculous. Uh, Moon, this card gains plus two plus two and flying until end of turn, so she can get pretty crazy out of hand. And the Flying Flying Bamboo, it's quick cast white and a one. Choose a ruler with tag six ages you control and also a ruler that you don't control outside of game uh, with uh, tag six ages. And then basically you swap them out. But if you play a moon to play this, and there's therefore instead of just her going to the graveyard because it's a chant, she goes into play instead, which is very powerful. Yeah, so you essentially get like to switch your ruler and get a free dude. Yeah. Which is kind of nuts. And then you do that. I'm sure there's a lot of fun mechanics of you just going around and flipping around like yeah. that. Yeah, and if you have another one, you can switch back again, because you're like, cool. If need be, yeah. Yeah. Next is Spirit of the Soil slash Loamy Soil. It is a two green, five, seven resonator. When this card is put into the graveyard from the field, put the top card of your Magic Stone deck into the field rested. It's just that it help you ramp. Or Loamy Soil, which is a chant, a green and two, put the top card of your Magic Stone deck into their field rested. That's so, all it's there for. Oh, yep. The next one is King of Kings. It's a two white and one. He's a fairy tale, 9-9. Nine, nine. Other fairy tales you, uh, resonators you control get plus 4, plus 4. And banish a light crystal, discard this card, target J resonator gains plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 until in a turn, draw a card. This is just the, 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 basically it's a lord that costs 3 and it's very powerful. Yeah. We're playing fairy tales, so you might as well play lords. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. Yeah. Uh, another lord we have is the fairy tale moon, which is actually an addition that's a fairy tale. So it still triggers for your never end because it counts as a fairy tale. Uh, it is one green addition. Fairy tale resonators get plus two plus two. Magic stones you control gain tap produce a moon, or rest the recovered wind J ruler you control. Look at the top two of your deck. You may reveal her a fairy tale. Doesn't matter. We're not playing a wind resonator, but yeah. if you get Kaguya, you can switch into her, so that way you can do this. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just there for for the moon mana and the plus two plus two. Yeah. The beginning of a fairy tale. That's a one <clears throat> white uh, chant, and it's a quick cast. So put. 2-2-2 two, 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 Life Spirit, for Fairy Tale Resonator token in the field. If this card was Awaken, draw a card. And Awakening is you rest a Recover J Ruler you control. And it has Quick Cast, so therefore you can do like Quick Blockers or whatever. And be able to draw a card for that. So this card's kind of nuts because it never end. Because it automatically, by that one card itself, gives you three triggers for never end. Like three cards towards his oh, yeah. need 10. That's very true. Because it still counts as a Fairy Tale in the graveyard and it makes two of them. Uh, next is Unknown Mother Goose. It is a white and one for its the Regalia from the last sets and it's mythic. At the end of turn, gain a light crystal or a darkness crystal. You're probably always going to get a light crystal in this deck because you do a lot of things with light crystals. Uh, tap produce will of any color of white or black. You spin this only for God's Arts, Fairy Tales, or Shadows or Mage Arts. We're only needing it for Fairy Tales because it's free mana to play Fairy Tales. Yeah, which is ridiculous. <clears throat> Cage of the Mother Goose. It's a black and a white. Uh, it is an addition. You may rest a recover fairy tale slash J resonator you control rather than pay the card's cost. Enter. Remove target non J ruler, non magic stone entity from the game. When this card leaves the battlefield, put that card back, uh, removed area so that it was removed from the game into the owner's hand. So it doesn't immediately come back into play, which is awesome. It goes back to the hand, which you can just deal with later. And then finally, the spells we have Symphony of the Two Great Dragons. It is two white and two blue. 
Return all non-magic stone, non-J rule entities to their owner's hands. If this card is awakened, you may put a spirit and or a fairy tale from your hand into the field. Awakening rest to recover J ruler you control. So, and you do have technically spirit and fairy tale in one card, so you can put that in as a spirit and then another one as a fairy tale. So you're just like, cool, I get two dudes. Yeah, thanks. Done. Uh, that is it for the deck. The stones are pretty simple. We're having Magic Stone of the Black Silence, Magic Stone of Deep Wood, Magic Stone of the Gusting Skies, the Magic Stone of the Six Stages, and the Wind Magic Stone. So technically there is five different Magic Stone names, so but you do have to have all of them, which kind of can be difficult. Yep. So don't don't stress getting Gruz Blessed to be eternal because it may not happen, but he's there mainly to turn your stones. And if you notice that every stone is a green stone minus the four of the Stone of the Six Stage, and that's just so that your uh, little red gets big. Yep. And everything else will I give you the mana you need of any of that color. So that's really cool. Uh, there is the uh, sideboard. We don't really do sideboard, but the other six stages rulers are in there just so you can get them. Uh, that's really the only thing that we have in the sideboard, the extra thing, which is Feasting, My Lest, Mouge Dart, and Zero. So you can use them based off of whichever one you need, whether you need to draw cards, kill things, or whatever. Yeah. It's just what it is. They're really cool. It's it's going to be interesting to see how Kaguya works because we've never played with her and it's going to be fun. Overall, though, I'm super excited about this deck. If yeah. you have any questions or comments, guys, look us down below. The deck will still be down below. So give it a look and then we'll see you all again next time. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. Let me go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.